welcome to Hebraic Awakening. We are going to tackle the Hebraic concept of prayer. And I'm not going to go into an exhaustive study. This is a short study. And I'm not going to go into intercessory prayer. I'm going to save that one for our Patreon members because I'm going to go a little deep. And if you don't really understand intercessory prayer you know the basics you're not going to be able to follow because you're going to be asking where's the scripts for that and things of that nature so we are going to tackle prayer from a hebraic concept if you have been studying hebrew a little bit of hebrew for any amount of time i think you have run across the hebrew word for prayer palal there's also another Hebrew word, tefillah, and I think we're, we are more familiar with the tefillah part of prayer, the begging and the pleading, right? Um, you know, we, we only do what we know. However, I am going to come from an ancient Hebraic perspective of prayer, all right? So the root of palal the pay and the lament, it represents one who is speaking to authority for judgment. All right. We see on the ancient Hebraic alphabet, we see the picture of a mouth pay, right? And we see the picture of a staff, the lament, mouth, speech, language, staff, authority, teach. All right. In ancient Hebraic thoughts, you would literally, right, physically fall down in the presence of an authority figure pleading your cause. African nations, you know, our people, they still do this to this day. And one person gave the story that they were visiting a certain country and there was an African woman and her child and I think she lost her purse or lost her money. And she went to maybe a store owner or somebody, you know, and she fell down before the person, begging the person, pleading her cause to the person um, about her situation. And she needed a ride. And the person who is watching this takes place understands the Hebrew. And because they understand the Hebrew, they end up helping the woman because the, you know, the lady, and I believe it was a lady, she didn't understand the African woman begging and pleading. She thought it was dramatic, right? But the person watching this studied Hebrew and understood. And so, you know, we in the West, with our Western mindsets, don't really understand things of this nature but as we are returning back to our hebraic roots to our heritage we are beginning to understand why you would literally fall down to an authority figure and beg you know they are the one that is going to render justice we know that prayer or pleading your cause doesn't necessarily have to just be to the most high or god in the hebraic sense and we're going to see the first form of this word pray when abram is praying or pleading his cause to his wife genesis 12 and 13. when you read it the first thing he, they render that word is pray and it means to beseech and they render that as pray so we can see that abram is pleading his cause to his wife right he wants her to bring about justice so that he doesn't get killed <laughs> because she's beautiful and he thinks that they are going to kill him you know when they see him all right so that is one way to look at to pray or to plead your cause we see this word also rendered in Genesis chapter 20 with Moshe. Now, therefore, restore 
the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and you shall live if you restore her not know that you shall surely die you and all that are yours so we can see that this is strictly tied to a judgment right and if he doesn't obey a judgment will be rendered i use um a a resource called htmlbible.com where i can look at the words in the actual hebrew so it's free and you can also uh, download it to your computer and you can use it online so let's go to this word as it is rendered judgment so we can find it in the book of psalms chapter 106 and verse 30 and this is when phineas stands up he speaks he's praise and then judgment is going to be rendered verse 30 then stood up phineas and executed judgment so when you look at that word in the hebrew it is actually the word palal. So this is how we know that palal also means judgment. Prayer is supposed to bring about justice, right, for Yah and for his people. Let's look at Samuel, 1 Samuel 12, verse 23. Samuel, we know he's a prophet and he is going to pray and teach so there is a time where you can pray and teach the right way verse 23 moreover as for me elohim forbid that i should sin against yahuwah or yahweh in ceasing to pray for you but i will teach you the good and right way all right you click on that word pray it is pala right and if we know anything about teach we know we click on that it is to throw as an arrow right we shooting for the target trying to make a bull's eye right so when you see a person um in the hebrew we'll we'll use the ancient hebrew pictograph and you envision a person shooting an arrow you know try to hit its target and that means to teach, to instruct, right? So prayer can also render teaching that will bring about justice because we're talking about being on the path, living the right way, which will bring about justice. Let's talk about Ecclesiastes chapter five, All right? Let's, let's just read. You know, get your Bibles. Let's just read for a minute. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, he's a judge, and you are upon the earth. Let your words be few. Listen, this is talking about coming near to the Most High in prayer and running your mouth before you can even get in the house to think. You know, we got that bad, all of us do, and we just start popping off at the mouth, you know, uh saying a lot of crazy stuff especially when we are in a bad situation and we want the most high to get us out if you just get me out of this situation i promise that i will give my life over to you right now listen you done made a vow and he break thought listen you cannot make a vow and don't keep it and a lot of us we might be living out judgment based on a vow that we have broken, all right? So this is giving us advice to be not rash with your mouth, right? Your heart, it represents your mind and your decisions. 
don't make a hasty decision to say something before the most high. Because he is a judge. When you are praying, he is the authority figure who can bring about justice. So let your words be few. Right? And you need to sit and to think and to discern before you open up your mouth so that you can know how to pray. And this is where... You know, we can talk about intercessory prayer, but I'm not going to do that in this because intercessory prayer is a very heavy word, super heavy. And, you know, we know what we know, but (laughs) intercessory prayer is about making contact with the most high, actual contact. And then you are going into heavy negotiation like some serious negotiation with the Most High on behalf of yourself or for someone else. And then judgment is going to be rendered and answer is going to be given. So in accessory prayer, that's something a little bit more intense. But Ecclesiastes is, is teaching us, you know, to be quiet, right? Verse 5, better is it that you should not vow than you should vow and not pay. Like, we don't understand, you know, we have a, most of us have a Christian uh, Western concept of making a promise. And I'm sorry, you know, in this Western world, they make promises and treaties and contracts and break them all the time. They do not believe in keeping write their word even the justice system is so flawed that there's loopholes after loopholes after loopholes so the west is not a good place to try to understand justice and to understand vows and to understand prayer it just is what it is you have to understand the mind of the ancient hebrews and the hebraic language so that you can fully understand what our people were going through, the culture of his time, their mindset, their emotions, and how the Most High wanted things done. But if you take the Hebraic mindset and thought process and culture and language out of the Bible, then you're going to get what we have been handed for those of us that may have started in Christianity or any other, any other religion. You know, so we got to be really careful with the way we pray. Because I believe a lot of stuff that we are encountering, I know especially for me, um, the Most High told me to watch what I pray because he will give it to me, right? And that, that'll be discussed in intercessory prayer. Because, you know, when you have that type of authority, you got to watch what you say for real. Like, seriously. Let's look at a word and a root word that is associated with prayer, right? So if we take away the pay and we add the shin, we will get the Hebrew word sha'el, right? And the root of that Hebrew word sha'el, S-H-L, is to draw out, right? So sha'el, it means to draw out something that is not known. Right. To draw out counsel and direction from the unknown. It's unknown to you. It's known to the most high. It's just unknown to you. And you need to draw it out. This word is associated with prayer. So as we go into prayer, we are stopping, you know, before we speak, we are discerning. We are trying to listen at the mouth of Yah right to draw out counsel and direction right so let's look at joshua 9 and 14 and the men took of their victuals and asked not the counsel at the mouth of the most high so let's click on that word ask and we have the hebrew word sha'el right and this is talking about demanding counsel right It's a whole lot of other words, but really it is to draw out that 
counsel. So we see that and they did not even ask. They didn't want to hear the mouth or the pay. Pa a pay the mouth right to hear his speech and what he had to say they just did it on their own right um shaul right we see this in the prayer shawls that we wear and this is the edge of the robe right worn by by the priests we've heard of the story matthew 14 mark 5 luke 8 you know the people thrusting and thrusting and thrusting However, one lady, she drew out the healing, right? She pressed into and she drew out something that was not known to her. She needed healing and she grabbed the corner of his, you know, what we would call a Toledo or a prayer shawl. She grabbed that corner and she drew out what she needed from the unknown, right? It was unknown to her. And if you don't know the prayer shawl has uh four healing scriptures in it right this act gave her the most highest direction that brought about judgment or justice or what we would call healing all right prayer may take a while for some things because you have to go in deep and discern and sit there and listen and draw out the counsel and the direction. And this is why we can't just come to him when we mature in our walk and just run our mouths because we have to learn these things in order to be as effective as we can. And of course, this takes time. But if you're talking about you've been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized for 20, 30 years, and you even if you don't know it's Hebrew, you should know how to do this, right? I didn't, I didn't know a lot of things were Hebrew until I started to walk in Torah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that is what I was doing. I just didn't know what to call it, right? So even if, even if you don't know what to call it, you still should be walking in it if you've been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. <laughs> water baptized right you should you know understand what i'm saying even if you have never heard it taught this way you should be able to understand it all right and our last reference let's talk about shlomo solomon let's talk about him his name literally means shalom and if you study the ancient paleo hebraic alphabet you understand that shalom is the authority to destroy chaos, right? Any chaos in your life, you now have the authority to destroy it because of the most high, right? Not because of your own strength, but because of the most high. So, this, so when we say shalom, we're really saying nothing missing, nothing broken because Yah has given you the authority or the ability to, to destroy chaos. Whatever chaotic authority you have running around, know that you have the shalom to overcome it. Right? So, Shlomo <laughs> literally means shalom. Look at the Most High. He speaks to Shlomo in a dream. Right? And in, and in the dream, Shlomo asks for wisdom. And I'm like, yeah, I'm beginning to understand. Verse 5, in Gibeon, the Most High appeared to Shlomo or Solomon in a dream by night. And Elohim said, ask what I shall give thee. Right? And we click on that word, ask, and what do we have? The Hebrew word, Sha'al. Meaning to draw out direction and counsel from the unknown. And what did he say? When you, Sha'el, or you draw out the counsel and the direction from me, I'm going to give it to you. And what did Shlomo do? He asked for wisdom, right? Because in order to walk in this authority that will destroy chaos in your life, you need wisdom. 
you need to discern and to understand what is what. You need to understand how to discern and divide up knowledge so that you can gain wisdom. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that was so good to me. And I'm like, okay, Shlomo had to ask his, it was his name. He had to, he had to ask for wisdom. And what happened with Shlomo? The wisdom gave him the authority and the ability to govern and to bring about justice for his people. Now, we know he has some flaws. We know what he did in the end, but we're talking about his overall life. Remember, our matriarchs and patriarchs are just like us. I know we, we, we put them way high on a, at a, on a pedestal, as we should, right? We should honor and respect them. But when we look at them, they are flawed just like us. However, they did what was right, right? According to Yah in most things. Most things, you know. <laughs> we could talk about how he had all that wisdom and end up <laughs> doing what he did. However, for most of his life, he gave incredible wisdom and he served his people well and gave justice, right? So this is the true meaning of the Hebrew concept of prayer. Now, intercessory prayer, that's different. That would be on my Patreon. So if you haven't joined and you want to hear, you know, deeper things like we're going into our new month the Rosh Kodesh we talk about that over there so I hope this has helped you and until the next video shalom everyone